We just upgraded to Xtool Create a Space 2.0, and there's a bunch of new features, and we'll show you what we learned right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week was supposed to be the continuation of our craft booth makeover, but during preparation, I downloaded Xtool Create a Space 2.0, and I was surprised at all of the new features. So I decided that I had to share them all with you and it needed its own video. So <laughs> we will do the social media QR code sign next week. What is Xtool Creative Space? It's Xtool's free design software that comes with each of the machines. It's compatible with all of their lasers. It allows you to import, design, and edit images and files. It's compatible with PC, iPad, and mobile devices. We've been using Creative Space for about two years now. We started out with the D1 and it was real basic. <laughs> but over time, they continued to release feature after feature till we got to like 1.78-ish and they jumped to 2.0. And that is a big jump in both UI and features. Let's walk through each of the different features and we're gonna show you what we learn and what we think is pretty cool about them. The first thing that we noticed, it's got a new home screen. Back in the day, back in the day, it was just 1.7. <laughs> when you used to open up Xtool Creative Space, you would start right in a project. But now you start at a home screen where you get to see your recent files and then like thousands of other files where other creators get to put stuff up. So you, there's plenty of access to a bunch of good stuff. I told Garrett, it looks a little like uh, Cricut Design Space, doesn't it? Oh, it does look a little like Cricut Design Space. It's even got some cloud to it. So you get 10 free cloud files for free. You can upload some cloud files. And that's pretty easy to do too. First, you would save the file to your desktop and then you would just add it to the cloud. So we'll add our layers to the cloud. And now I'll be able to access these from anywhere. I can access it from another computer. I can access it from my phone and then I would still have all the same settings. So to start a new project, there's a few different ways. I can open up one of my recent ones. I can open up something from my computer. I can also just click new project. So we'll start by clicking new project and you'll see it even has a new load screen. Ooh, fancy. And that fancy little X. Now we, something really cool about this new version is that you can have multiple projects open at the same time. So here's one project and this project up here is connected to my F1, right? So I can have multiple projects open and I can connect to multiple machines with these multiple projects. So I will switch this one to the P2. Yes, switch. So it's going to change my canvas back here. Oh, so, and you can see right there, it's connected to both of them. See yeah, that? see, I'm connected to my P2 and my F1. Let's add my S1 just because I don't want to have him feeling left out. So as soon as the project opens, I can switch to my S1. Switch. Now I have three projects going on three different machines. So it's pretty flexible this way. And another great tool is this is called my canvas. My work area is called my canvas. So I can have multiple canvases. So I can create a second canvas. And this would come in really handy for something like, let's just open this owl door corner. So in my owl door corner, I'm gonna wanna use two different materials. I'm gonna need something thick for the backer and then something thin for the top. So usually we cut this, this backer piece out of like, what, quarter inch MDF, quarter inch um, birch or something. And then this one will be out of eighth inch, all my little top pieces. And to do this typically, I would cut this first, I'd cut my backer, then I'd have to move it out of the way. And then I grab my top pieces and I gotta make sure, oops, I gotta make sure this piece isn't touching my work area. Get out of there. Then I can run it. But now with these new canvases, I can set my work area up here 
where I'm running six millimeter bass plywood. I can cut it and then I just click on my other canvas. All right, I line this up and this is already set to three millimeter basswood. So then I just run my cut. I don't have to drag things around, move stuff around. And if I like the placement and I save it, I just open it up like this every time. That's great. You right? can just keep running this thing and it'll be, it'll already have all the settings there on each of its different canvases. Yeah. I, I, like I it. think that is great to have in the multiple work areas in one project. And another great feature are the layers. They really listen to what the user needs and what the user is trying to do with this software. If you're trying to do some design software, it's really hard when you only had like these colored layers here where I can move to these different layers here. But now they have layers inside of layers. So down here on the bottom left, you'll see this little button, layers and object list. So here are my layers. So I can rearrange my layers. This mainly has to do with my, my arrangement of my cut when it's processing the path. But down here, I have an object list and you can see as I click these, it'll highlight the different rectangles. Right now I have these set to engrave so that they'll be solid and you can see. But I can drag the layers on top of the other layers. And what's great about this is it acts more like Adobe Illustrator than it had before. Mm -hmm. So like when I would do the Boolean Unites or Subtracts, uh, I would have to grab my the one that I wanted the thing subtracted from first, and then I would grab the item that I wanted to subtract from it, and then do my subtract. Here it, it works like Adobe Illustrator. So whatever's laying on top. Wow, just visually you can yeah, see. Yeah, visually, whatever's laying on top, and I come over here, to subtract, it's going to subtract front. See? We'll undo that. And if I grab, let's move these down. So if I grab the red now and move it in front, right? Subtract front. Pretty cool, huh? Before, I had to remember which one I would click first. Now I have the orange up front. We'll do subtract front. So it works more like Illustrator. Nice. Which, yes, which is very nice. You got your typical Unites and stuff. Another cool little update that we noticed is they've changed how they work with text inside Creative Space. So if I just put down hello, whoops. Let's move it down here, move this out of the way. There's a few different things I can do with the text now. Up top, you see this little bubble? I can rotate my text. That's nothing new. But now they got this second little bubble over here on the right. Now, if I grab this, it'll bend my text. Nice. All right? It'll bend it either way. Uh-huh. Right? Text on path kind of thing. That's well. pretty cool, huh? Yeah, kind of like type on path. All right, exactly. We'll leave it a little bit bent. Now, before, in the old version, when you'd hit weld, Unless the letters were touching, it really wouldn't weld anything. It really wouldn't turn it into an actual object or a vector object. You'll see that it says text here. Now when I weld it, right, it actually turns it into a vector. Right? So this is a true vector this time, not just an outline or whatever they were doing before. And here's something great too. Right? Now that I have it selected and I have it a vector, if I come over here on the right hand side where it says vector, I can edit my nodes. All right, so now I can grab these nodes and move them around. And that's not just for text, right? That's you can not do just that for text. For any of your graphics, you can adjust individual nodes, right, clean so up files. We'll say done. Right? We'll come down here and we'll change this thing. Right? We'll come in here and we'll say edit nodes. And if I select a node and highlight it and then hit delete, it will delete that node. So let's do this one. I'll highlight it, delete. Or I can add a node, like in the middle here. You'll see that it highlights. I can create a node. Now I can grab it and move it around. And they even have features that you would see inside Adobe Illustrator where I can change this node type. So over here on the right hand side, node type. Right now it's a corner, sharp corner. But I can also make it a curved line 
I can curve it on the side, you know, make one <laughs> side larger than the other. I can grab these nodes and change it around, right? Or I come up here, change it, let's see, flip it. I'll make it a corner again. But they've really stepped up their game with being able to edit nodes. So if I have a, an image that I imported and I need to clean it up a little bit, I can do it right inside Creative Space now. I love that. I don't have to go to Illustrator to fix nodes or clean up a file or do my image trace. I can do it right inside here now, clean up my nodes if I have to, change well, stuff. And that's a little tip, tip for you here. The fewer the nodes you have, the faster your cut, the cleaner your cut. So always check the nodes on your images, especially if you've done an image trace, because sometimes it'll put you get unnecessary, some no yeah. Yeah, unnecessary nodes in there and you can just delete them and clean up your image. It'll make it a cleaner cut. We've also noticed that they changed their left side navigation around, right? Some of these are still the same. Look, there's some vectors, so I can actually draw with my little vector tool. I can actually close the loop. They have these little icons, I guess. I don't know, basic shapes. Yeah. I never use those. They have this new AI uh -huh. thing. It's this generative AI. We'll come back to that. But this is what I wanted to get to right here. They have this new little button, Applications, and it opens up this little tab. Grid Array was already there. Circular Array, I think, was already there. I think it was. Material Test Array was already there. You know, you had to go find it in the menu, but it was there. But look at this, Code Generation. So I can make a QR code. Let's go ahead and make us a QR code. K-N-G, make it, dot com. Will give me a forward slash save bam look at that qr code i used to have to go out to canva to get my qr codes and then import them fancy fancy yeah, but now boom here it is i don't have to leave this at all to do my qr codes and i see that they got a lot of space over here on the left hand side yes. i feel like a lot of big things are coming i think they're gonna start creating some like mini applications that you can use inside here. So I'm mm -hmm. excited to see what's coming for yeah. the applications. I was thinking the same thing. This is definitely being set up for something more. Something I, I, big. So, well, <laughs> definitely <laughs> more. <laughs> the S1 has a couple of new features too. Yes, yeah, so you know that the S1 does not have an onboard camera, but that never stops the S1. It's still great. Uh, you can now use the Smart Fill feature that the P2 has on your S1. You'll create a snapshot preview by capturing a photo with your phone and you send it to the PC. You can load it here onto your canvas and use that same Smart Fill feature just like you did on the P2. Okay, this one is my favorite <laughs> new feature. This was the definite wow factor for me. We're over here on my P2. This is so I can show you an example, but this is this is my favorite feature. So we'll select the layer that I'm gonna cut or, or, or whatever. I have three millimeter basswood plywood selected, right? So we'll go over here to my red layer, which is usually my cut. We'll call this cut, right? And now you'll, you'll enter your parameters, your cut parameters into this new easy set panel. You'll see that they have some up here. So let's go into the easy set panel. Are you ready? Yeah, all right, this is it. You see this little picture down here? Wait, hold on. Let me back up. You can manually set your power and your speed and your passes, or you can click on this picture here, right? And everybody, I guess not everybody, I, I guess a couple of users took the time to go ahead and do these test cards for us so that we can see the best speed and power for this wood. I mean, how cool is this? So if I click on one of these now, we'll click on one of the junky ones that didn't work. You'll see that it changed my power and speed. Now, if I click on this one, we know it worked. It looks clean. This is my new speed and power right here. 90%, 35 speed, one pass. Look, how great is that? Yeah, and it's right up there on the material. You'll see that it says Xtool P2, 55 watt. Here's how it cuts. This is what it recommends. This is, yeah, I love this. I don't have to do a test card for every material. I mean, I really should because every laser is a little bit different, 
But this gives me a great starting point. You I could do a quick test cut with those settings. Yeah, e I mean, easy a quick test cut. Same with this basswood over here. All right, I'll select my red layer. It, go ahead, look at, oh, look at this. This is great. <laughs> you can see that it didn't cut all the way out. This was my favorite feature. This, I thought, was the wow factor. So go me. back to that. If you were using that, which, which picture, which, which option or settings would you choose? Oh, me? I, I guess, look, it tells me right here, this is outlined. Oh, is your recommended I value? I think that's my recommended value. Yep, these are my values. And this one is the one that it says to use. That's so great. If you're new and you're just now using this, your laser for the first time, and you have no idea what to expect, this is really great. This is a good first step for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some lasers that have built-in presets. Those are great. That's a great starting point. But being able to visually see what it's going to look like, um, I mean, come on. That... <laughs> This was, this was his, what do you, I'm not even going to say it. This, this was, was my his wow factor. STFU when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was wowed. I, I had to get up. I had to go tell somebody. I had to go tell somebody. <laughs> so another great feature that they added, let me open this up, is you can see how long your cut or your process time will actually be. Do you remember in 1.7 where you kind of had to guess? It gave you a process <laughs> screen, but it really didn't tell you anything. Sometimes it a... gave me a time. Before I that, that was in the last version. Previous to the last version, it didn't give you a time at all. So they have a new process screen. <laughs> and the new process screen tells you a lot more information. So it will tell you the path of my laser, like the laser head, what, what the path of it will take. It will tell me what's engraved, what's cut, yeah, the position of my laser head. And down here, it'll tell me how much total time estimated. I have been begging for this feature. Me I really needed too. to know how much time these cuts are going to take. So I'm really excited to see that it is, it is definitely part of this release. So I can hit play and I can watch it. This is what it would look like in real time. Right, or I can speed it up to 40 times, right? I can watch it go. Or I can just drag this across and, ah. and see see it go. I can toggle on and off the trajectory. That's the little the spaces in between the actual cuts and stuff. So you can see it or not see it. I love it. But I love this it. This is great. I actually get to see what I'm doing here. And you can change this process time. Right now you see that it's 50. 50 minutes to cut, right? That's because over here, they have this new thing in your processing path, auto planning. So it will let- Planning. Auto planning. <laughs> so it will, let, it will let the computer make the decisions instead of you making the decisions. In the last version, you kind of had to tell it whether to do it by layer or do it by object. So if I leave it how it used to be, right? And we'll run it. I think this is about an hour or something. I think this cut was about an hour. This I think it engraved. was 108 or something. Calculating. Oh, one hour in two minutes. So you see that using that auto planning, right, it saved me about 12, 13 minutes, 12 minutes. I mean, time is money. <laughs> Anywhere that I can save some time is great. This is a long engrave and cut. Which you can see, it really limited the amount of movement in the head. So if I go back to user defined and we'll run it again, we'll zoom in this time and you can see that there's a lot more movement where it's not doing cuts. It's just wasting time, just running all over the place. Yeah. See, it's coming up here to this where it kind of worked top down with the auto planning. Yeah, look at this one. It went and did the hole in that one and it went all the way in yeah, the bottom left. All the way down. <laughs> well, if we drag it across, you can see it jumping around. Yeah, see, jumping around. So I, I do like being able to tell how long it will take and to watch my path now. Good job, good job. <laughs> so last but not least, 
is another application over here. Oh, what did I hit? Oh, I did hit generative AI. Oh, yes. Look at this. It gives me a whole new screen now. <laughs> right? So I just want some laser art. Do I want vector art? We'll get some clear icons. Here we go. I just want a fox. Give me a fox to engrave. Or should I say fox wearing a hat? I personally have never had luck with generative AI in any application. It always gives me nightmare fuel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got four options. Let's see what's happening. Not bad. That, not bad for Fox wearing a hat. I mean, this one's probably the best. Yeah. So now I can click on this. I can import it into my canvas. Yes, we'll scale it. This will bring it down. Look at, oh, that. Right yeah, look at in that. There. Look at that. And then you can Pretty edit cool. it. Can I? Well, let's ungroup it. Let's see if I can edit a node. Edit nodes. Look at that. And here's where I could clean some stuff up. Oh, and did you know that if you use your scroll button, it'll move your canvas up and down. But if you hold your control key and use your scroll button, you'll zoom in and out. Look at there. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Oh, and if you hold your space bar, it'll give you a little hand. And then if you click your scroll mouse, it'll grab your canvas and you can move around. So you can actually move where you want to go. I find this very useful. I use it all the time. But there you go. It's done. I won't mess with his nodes. I won't mess with your nodes, Foxy. You got a cool hat. <laughs> But it's not just line art. Uh, show the that 3D, oh, some three of the dimensional. three-dimensional stuff. Yeah. Some of the stuff it gave me earlier. Yes. Let's because I think that's really cool. Oh, like this stuff? Yes. All right. Well, let's click on laser art this time. It gives us a lot more styles. And that's the fox we used earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's the fox. We'll add them to our F1 canvas. Yep. Now we'll process it. Ooh, look at that. 42 minutes. It's beautiful. Yeah, that is cool. I wonder if it would look like that when it came out. We'll have to test it. Yeah, we'll have to test it. What was your favorite feature? Uh, my favorite feature, I don't know if you could tell, but was the material settings. I really enjoyed that. That was, that was great. My feature, favorite feature was the estimated time. I have really been wanting that feature for a long time. So I'm so excited to see that it truly is built in with this 2.0 version and will let me know how long this engrave or cut is gonna take. I think they did a really good job with this set of features. I think they thought about small businesses and that's where the extra canvases and multiple projects and connecting with multiple machines at one time really came in. I could really see that streamlining somebody's workshop. I can see that they're looking to grow even further. You can see in the applications panel, I'm pretty sure there's big things that are gonna happen with that feature, as well as the AI feature. Now, Garrett's not super impressed with that. He doesn't think he's gonna use it, but I'm pretty impressed with it, and I can't wait to explore it more. If you like leveling up your laser game, you enjoy these tips and tricks with using a laser or the laser software, you should join us over on Patreon, where we have all types of information like this, from Adobe Illustrator classes to classes about light burn and creative space. And there's a whole community of folks out there that are going through the same situations you are, no matter what your challenges are, your wins, your successes, your questions. There's a community out there that can help support you. So big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. And I am about out of time. <laughs> it's time that I actually have to go make that social media QR code sign. So you get back to work, I'll get back to work, and I'll see you on Tuesday.